Hey summoners, make sure that you're subscribed to the Mobilitics YouTube channel and hit that bell button, that way you're always up to date and part of our notification squad. Hello summoners and welcome back to Mobilitics, where today we have the first patch of the year, brand new Season 9, Patch 9.1 video tier list. Hey guys, so super quick and super cool announcement. We have a new Mobilitics SoundCloud podcast for you guys to listen to. It is based on the tier list. It is patch 9.1. And if you're looking for a different way to absorb the tier list, this is a much more raw, longer version where I will go through all the champions in a much slower way with more information. It's about 30 minutes long. If you're going to the gym or if you're just in the car and you normally just like to like listen to the video and not pay that much attention or you don't prefer to read it off of our blog. This is a new podcast style way for you to absorb the tier list. Uh, we'll be going through the normal tier list, really nice and slow, talking about a bunch of different champions, and it's more related to the patch. So if you're looking for like a patch rundown and tier list combination, then the SoundCloud podcast is perfect for that. Make sure you leave feedback. This is something we're experimenting on. So if you want more information about that or you want to check it out, and we would love your feedback, make sure you do that. Anyway, let's get into the video. Starting off with the first tier list of the year, boy does it feel good, let's do top lane. So we got Mordekaiser, Jax, Sion, Kled, and Cassio in S tier. Mordekaiser is pretty crazy with Shield Bash, so we'll talk about him in a second. Jax, Sion, Kled, and Cassio have been staple picks for a while. Other than Cassio, she's still just really good with the Q Max Comet build, and that's why you see her here. Kled is just the best fighter at the moment, and that's what makes him a pretty good champion. But let's talk about Mordekaiser for a sec. So this champion gained a lot of popularity, not actually because of his top lane performance, but because of the recent bot lane boosting strategy. If you've seen Midbeast's video on this, essentially with the Smite Mordekaiser bot lane, it was pretty good before, and it was this kind of duo boosting strategy. The thing is that on this patch, actually, you can't really take Smite in the lanes anymore. Riot did a great job of like almost permanently fixing funneling with the way that they reduce the jungle item gold in the way that it works with the lane minions. So that being said, this is not Smite Mordekaiser top lane, this is actually just Shield Bash, either with Airy, Dark Harvest, or Phase Rush Mordekaiser. This is just totally normal AP Mordekaiser top lane. He is oppressive, he is really good with the buffed version of Shield Bash, so make sure you give him a try. As far as A tier goes, we have a couple new things there. We have a couple mages like Malzahar and Karthus, but we've covered them before. You guys know why mages are good top lane. You just outrange and out damage and out poke every top laner, and they're pretty good top lane, better than you might think, especially that Malzahar top lane. You're really good sieger, and you're slightly hard to gank, even though you have no mobility because of your spell shield. The other thing is that Vayne is meant to be there. We'll get to her and we'll talk about her down in the bottom lane, because it's one of our picks of the week and she received some buffs. I think Fiora is A tier as well. The reason Fiora is here is because of the Essence Reaver build. Fiora probably isn't an A tier top laner without going Essence Reaver and Conqueror. That's the best and most optimal build for her. If you're going Trinity Force into Ravenous Hydra into Death Dance, she's probably more like B or C tier. We have our first pick of the week of top lane, and that's going to be coming from me with Orn. Now, Orn received a little rework here. He got a nice little rework. Again, there's more information about this, and I go into this pretty in-depth on the new podcast. So if you're interested in why Orn is coming back and what his rework looks like, you can do that by checking out the podcast. As far as Orn for solo queue now, I think he's a little bit better. The way his new passive works is fantastic, where it doesn't really bait your team into building bad items. If you remember before, when you had to spend money to buy like a Rabadon's Death Crown, sometimes it baited your teammates into building that like first item, which is a terrible, terrible build path and is not gold efficient whatsoever. Now Orn gets his unstoppable back as well on his W, and he is genuinely a better champion than before. I like his rework, and I think he's going to be B tier. For high elo top lane, we've actually swapped out two fighters here. We had Aatrox hovering around A and B tier for a while in top lane, and then we had Riven sitting and holding strong in S tier. We've actually swapped those two. We do think that Aatrox is better than Riven at the moment. Riven is still good and is A tier, and Riven players shouldn't worry too much. If you already play Riven, you can still definitely make her work, especially in the higher ranks, but Aatrox is just more consistent and more oppressive overall, that it was just hard to say that Riven was better than Aatrox. It's not that Riven is bad, Riven is still A tier, it's just Aatrox is so oppressive at times and the damage feels really hard to lane against. 
The rest of top lane, Kennen gets much better with elo, and yes, Teemo is even an A tier top laner, even in high elo. The crazy thing is that a lot of the Teemo mains, especially in NA, are doing very well in reaching Masters, Grandmasters, and Challenger. Make sure you watch out for Teemo, because he's going to be deadly. Onto the jungle position, Udyr, Ramus, and Jax are rounding out S tier for us. Ramus is totally insane, we'll talk about him in just a second. I do like some A tier stuff as well, Amumu, Xin Zhao, and Master Yi all doing pretty well. Master Yi was a champion who was a big proponent and user of Rageblade, and even though that item is worse overall when it got some changes a couple patches back, it also became cheaper. So even though the item itself and the power spike of getting Bloodraiser into Rageblade is worse than before, it's about the fact that you get it sooner, you reach your power spike sooner, which is what's making him an A-tier jungler at the moment. Ramus is having a ton of success in the jungle position at the moment, he just spam ganks you non-stop. Even Adam has been playing him. Adam isn't much of a jungler, but he does off-roll into jungle, and he's been playing him in high elo, having a lot of success in diamond 1 plus elo, and Adam's normally a mid laner. I think that Ramus is fantastic at the moment, you spam ganks, constantly just oppress the enemy laner, you're always worried about Ramus coming from behind you with a power ball, and you've gotta watch out for this champion, incredibly tanky, really good with aftershock and because of the way that water walking works you kind of just zoom around the lanes and you are very very tough to deal with the other thing is that Ramus can take armor armor in your adaptive stats which means that because you start the game with so much armor your jungle clear is healthier probably than it's ever been even though Shaco definitely got hurt pretty hard with the Tiamat nerfs, the thing is that all you really need to do is get off one successful gank and make sure you get at least one crab and you'll still be okay, you'll still be able to get your Tiamat. And with Shaco, because you take Ignite, it doesn't end up hurting you as much as you maybe thought before, it just delays a little bit of time to your Tiamat, and Shaco is already a fantastic solo queue jungler. So yes, it is a huge nerf that Shaco did indeed lose some gold and the Tiamat was harder to get now. Now, but remember that Shaco is a champion that doesn't require you to be incredibly ahead all the way through the mid game in the late game. You just need to get a couple early ganks off and get your team ahead, and then you'll be able to snowball and, and catch back up and farm anyway. The chances of you getting some kills in the early game and getting some ganks off for Shaco, let's say after like level 3 or level 4, is still pretty high. But I do think Shaco main should be worried when Ignite gets nerfed, right? Has already said they're looking to nerf systemic damage, so if Ignite is touched, then Shaco mains probably should be worried because I do think he crutches on that a lot. For high elo jungle, Kha'Zix shoots way up and Rengar shoots way up as well. They are the best AD assassins in solo queue. Shaco's not too far behind them, but I do think Shaco is worse than Kha'Zix and Rengar at the moment for high elo. Kindred, Elise, Lee Sin, Camille, and Nunu and Willem all become better with elo and with time investment. Nunu is hard to play and we addressed that in the last tier list, why Nunu's difficulty is where it is. He is, just needs some time. You do need time invested into him and them to figure out how to play them. I do think Elise is probably the best jungler in A tier by looking at this list. I think Elise is on the cusp moving into A tier, or sorry, S tier, and I think Sejuani with her rework will be picked up by competitive and pro players. Okay, moving on to mid lane. We have two picks of the patch this time in mid lane with Rumble mid from Adam in S tier, and we have mid beast pick of the patch as Cassadin in A tier. The rest of the list is mostly the same. All the stuff you've seen before, and I would say mid lane has received the least amount of changes, we're hoping that mid lane meta will be shifted up quite a bit over the next coming patches. Riot has talked about nerfing some mages or nerfing AP itemization, they even said outright that they're nerfing Oblivion Orb, so look out for mid lane to have new picks and new up and coming stuff pretty soon. Galio is still oppressive, but let's get into Rumble. For Adam, he has chosen Rumble mid as his S tier pick of the patch. Rumble is primarily seen as a top laner for most of his league career, but recently he has been finding a lot more success in the mid lane. Part of this reason is that mid lane champions are currently joining in a lot of skirmishes in and around the jungle, fighting over scuttle crabs, which is a perfect environment for Rumble to fight in. Also, the thing is that mid lane he's able to take Ignite, allowing him to 100-0 any mage or squishy champion with his ult if they don't have flash up. 
His other problem is that in top lane, when he mostly has to shove all the time, it makes him an easy target to be ganked, but in the mid lane, you value wave clear much more, and the lane is much shorter, so his ability to clear waves is more valuable. Try a mid lane with electrocute for full burst potential, and see your opponents cry. As for mid beast, his pick of the patch was Cassidan. Now Cassidan is a really strong late game scaling champion, but he does still have some bad matchups, Talon, Aurelia, stuff like that. However, you can beat them with a Grasp of the Undying rune page, while easier matchups such as Lux and Syndra can be stomped with an Electrocute rune page. The buff to Shield Bash does not go unnoted for Cassidan, as the more damage to his kit also brings more sustainability to your early laning phase while looking to get gold and scale. Basically, if you go for the Electrocute page, you want to take secondary as Shield Bash and Second Wind, and if you're against AD or melee champions like Talon, Zed, or Aurelia, make sure you take Grasp of the Undying. With Shield Bash, Grasp, Second Wind, Taste of Blood, and Ravenous Hunter, all that healing and sustain will allow you to get to your late game. With Kastan, it's all about not sacking the early game so much that you never get to your items, it's about getting there. For high elo mid, Zillion, Galio, Cassiopeia, and Aatrox round out S tier. Malzahar, Cassidan, Karthus, Velkaz, Fizz, Ari, Talon, Rumble, Zoe, Aurelia, and Katarina. All really good, solid, staple A tier picks. I think the biggest thing for me to watch out for right now is the Phase Rush slash Electrocute Vladimir page all the way down in B tier. I think things like Vladimir and even Vagar for high elo have a lot of room to move up, so keep an eye out for those ones. I think Zoe and Katarina are underrated AP assassins, and I think Velkaz has the potential to be S tier in the near future. Alright, moving on to the bottom lane, we have Vagar, Lucian, Yasuo, and Cassiopeia doing well in S tier. Vagar is a surprisingly good bot laner, having a support right there with you to make sure that you have time to scale up and get your items. On top of that, remember that Vagar's passive also gives you AP not just from hitting your Q, like landing the last hit, also, you just get AP from hitting people with your abilities, and in the bot lane, you have twice as many people you can hit as the mid lane. As far as A tier, we have our final pick of the patch coming in from Hewitt with Vayne, which I promised we would talk about. Twitch, Kogma, and Ash are all good ADCs at the moment. Also, check out those buffs for Sivir. Her damage buffs are quite significant. Ash got some really nice quality of life buffs. I mean, for years, literally years, Ash mains have been asking or saying, wouldn't it be cool if Hawkshot gave you an assist because you gained vision? I mean, well, there it is. There you go. Your E can actually give you assist money. How cool is that? All right, let's move on to our final pick of the patch, Hewitt's pick of Vayne in A tier. We mentioned earlier that Vayne is an A tier top laner, and that is not by mistake at all. The thing is that the buff to Vayne's final hour is a great boost to her damage, mobility, survivability, stealth, all that stuff. Despite this, she still has problems, and her problems were always laning phase and having bad matchups into specific compositions that have a lot of zone control mages or high mobility burst champions. She will still struggle against control mages, but if you pair her with an enchanter, she'll be able to survive through that burst damage and barrel through the rest of the enemy team. She may not see immediate success, but Riot does plan to patch more and more towards tanks and enchanters in the near future, while also nerfing burst damage, so that's where we'll see Vayne rise up, and do not be surprised by patch 9.3 if Vayne is an S tier pick. For high elo bottom lane, Lucian is stupidly dominant. Lucian is your best pick no matter what for ADCs at the moment. He's a great marksman, so it's a lot of what ADCs like to play. So if you're tired of playing Kai'Sa or Jin every single game, just play Lucian. I'm sure you've seen enough Lucian. I'm sure you've lost to enough Lucians and won enough games as Lucian. I think Sivir is my biggest thing to watch right now. Those buffs are pretty significant. Mordekaiser is a question mark. Will he still be able to be good despite that duo abuse strategy, especially with Smite not being as good or being totally unviable? That's something that we'll just have to see. I think Mordekaiser just normally with Summon Ares should be just fine. And I do think Callista, that's a very interesting one down there in B tier. She received some nice changes on this patch. We'll have to see how good Callista is. She still struggles from a couple of bugs, but she might be pretty good. 
Last but not least, always let's go to support. Brand, Sona, and Zyra are your best S tier supports at the moment. The only issue with this, remember, if you're gonna play them, play them now. Riot has outright stated we're nerfing Brand and Zyra in the future. Maybe the nerfs will be small and they'll still be fine in S tier, but if you want to abuse Brand and probably more specifically Zyra, now is going to be your time. Sona is a fantastic enchanter, just like Soraka and Janna, who are in A tier. I think my personal favorite support on this list has to be Taric. The way that you make Taric work is actually by taking the presence of Mine Rune in the Precision Tree. That gives you some mana and ultimate CD refund. So if you want to play Taric, go Presence of Mine into Tenacity and you'll be surprised at how good he really is. Janna is a pick that has been rising up. She received some buffs and Enchanters received some buffs as well. I think if the tank meta starts to come back and if ADCs and Marksmen receive their itemization changes, which Riot has promised, we're gonna just go right back to Art and Sensor meta. I think it's coming, guys. I think in the middle of the season or maybe even earlier than that, Vayne Janna once again is gonna be the bot lane, Vayne Kog'Maw, stuff like that. So Janna priority is going to skyrocket. I think right now, at least just for this patch, Soraka is the better Janna, but that could easily flip-flop with any changes Riot makes. I think if you want to play Janna, now is the time to do that again because she was so bad for so long, so give her a try. And finally, moving on to high elo supports. You have Sona, Zyra, and Thresh in S tier. You have some B tier stuff I think is really interesting. Pike is not nearly as good as he is in solo lanes like mid or top lane, but I do think Pike is actually pretty good as a support. It's just that he's a little bit weird and awkward to play at times. I think if the rise of Pike or if the rise of Blitzcrank and Thresh already as an S tier champion, we will see Morgana come back a little bit. And I think Leona is probably better than you expect. I think some of the mage supports are okay. Vel'Koz is probably the best mage support in the game right there with Zyra and Brand, especially considering they're receiving nerfs. So if those Zyra and Brand nerfs are tough, consider picking up Vel'Koz right after that. Anyway, guys, that was the first Mobilytics tier list of the new year. We hope you guys are ready for another awesome year of tier lists. Make sure you leave a comment what you thought of this tier list in patch 9.1. And go, 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 grind ranked, get ready, and prepare for patch 9.2 because ranked is coming, baby. We'll see you guys for 9.2 and season 9.